Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Autel EVO 2 version 2.6.22. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, it's your favorite big boy from the Big Island of Hawaii, 808 State here. Today we're going to talk about the Autel EVO 2 update 2.622. I did some extensive testing, I flew almost 400 flights with it, and I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to go through the patch notes on what is new, what I like, and what totally sucks, and what is kind of weird. And uh, yeah, so if this is the first time to my channel, please don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell. I do drone tech related stuff, gear reviews, and uh, YouTube tips and tricks. So, Autel has launched 2.6.22. If you're on an iOS or Apple device, you need version 1.9.10. And if you are on the Android device, you need version 1.7.38 to be up to date with your Autel Explorer first in order to update this whole thing. Once you updated your Autel Explorer app, I would suggest go to the Autel website itself, go on the technical support, Look under the Autel Evo 2 series and then you will find in the download section all the way in the bottom the bin file which is the update 2.622. Once you have that downloaded to your computer, throw it onto an SD card and throw it inside of your bird. Start up your controller, start up your device that you hook it up to and then start up your bird. Make sure that you remove the propellers prior to updating so just in case they want to start up that nobody gets hurt. Once you've done that, the update should be running through. Wait until the update is done and also follow the directions that is on the remote controller itself. So therefore that you're not going to run into problems once you update it that you're going to have missing data or missing files whatsoever. This update on the other hand, you will have to do it for every battery separate. So I printed out a small list on the patch notes itself. If you're here to listen to me about the mission flights, I have not done any missions flights. So this video is not for you. You can turn it off pretty much right now. So when we have the patch notes itself on the camera itself, it says added raw file format support in mission flights, which is self-explanatory. So they added on besides the JPEGs, they added on the raw files. Added manual exposure settings, aperture priority and shutter priority support in AEB mode. AEB mode is a mode that you can utilize during your picture taking where it takes multiple pictures with different exposure. So then when you wanna put them together, I think it's between two and six pictures per image that you wanna take. It takes six in a row, up to six in a row, and then you're gonna be overlaying them and have a better HDR resolution or a better, better color scheme on your whole thing with shadows and all that stuff. Besides that, they added manual exposure mode in hyperlapse. Uh, the manual exposure mode is pretty good because now you can choose between auto settings, you can choose between manual settings for your aperture, for your ISO, for everything. It's self-explanatory as well. They added a quick zoom changes in the Explorer app. It's not much, it's just pretty much that the whole thing is lined up inside there and you can click on it or you can just drag it on your screen and you're gonna be able to zoom in. Intelligent flight and mission added cruise mode in hyperlapse. What that does is once you are in your hyperlapse mode, and let's say you started up your video to take pictures every so often. Now you press the stick forward and you're going, let's say two miles per hour. If you press the A button underneath, you will be able to maintain that speed and it will just keep going in that direction. The same is going up with height, sideways, or even if you want to rotate it. So here's an example. For an example, I started going backwards a little bit. I started turning to the side and then I made a whole rotation or I tried to at least tell the, tell the drone to do a rotation while I'm doing the hyperlapse. Added orbit hyperlapse. Orbit hyperlapse is another cool feature where it's pretty much like orbiting around you, but this time as a hyperlapse. The one thing about it is you're going to be able to determine how far away of a distance you want to have the subject to be, how far of an orbit, I mean, uh, how, how big of an orbit you want to make around it. Be careful about it and calculate it at first if you're looking at the map that there's no people below you, there's nothing in the way that might be obstructing your course in going so. It also added mission recording. So while in missions before you was only able, while it was executing the mission, it was only able to take pictures. Now you're gonna be able to actually press the record button as well. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now to the bug fixes optimizations. Optimize the autofocus performance. 
Some people had issues when uh, the autofocus was going for the AF mode. So while it was looking somewhere, it kept going in and out, out of focus, and it had issues with that. Apparently there was a bug inside there, so they fixed it with this version. I never had that problem, so I can't speak for it. And so far after 400 flights with this new version, I've had no issues whatsoever. It also reduced the minimum distance between two waypoints and waypoint mission. It's also pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, you can choose how much distance is in between each point in your mission mode now. They also removed the boat mode on the EVO. So they say now that the, that any surface this drone can take off, which I can verify, I took it off. I took off from the boat. I took off from the roof of a car. I took off from the back of the bed of the truck, even though there was a lot of metal in, involved. She takes off pretty much anywhere I put her. So that is a very good thing that is happening right now with this new 2.6.2. Uh, because before I had some issues when I was in the back of the truck, it took forever for me to actually take off or it was telling me that there was a problem with the compass and it just didn't want to work out. It still does that if there's heavy stuff. I cannot take off from the hood because there's a motor underneath. So there's, there's heavy metal objects and stuff that's going to interfere with the magnetic field, whatever over it, so that the GPS or the compass calibration seems to appear to be off. But so far she has been taking off from a lot of uneven surfaces even sideways and all that stuff so they fixed that or they actually removed the boat mode in it fixed the negative altitude issue during the landing sequence i had that problem when i was landing sometimes it was telling me that i'm actually below five feet of my initial takeoff point so they seem to be having an issue with that i had it and it's it hasn't happened ever since fix the mission upload issue when resuming an emission i can't tell you nothing about it because i haven't tried it Added an option to return home when aircraft disconnects. I haven't looked for that option and I haven't seen that option either. So I can't really tell you anything about it. If you know anything about it, please leave it in the comments below so that other people can be able to read it, okay? So now, since we went with all these patch notes right through, so let's talk about my experience with these 400 flights, with these new intelligent flight modes and what I think about 2.6.22. I had strafing issues and I had um, issues where the drone during heavy winds was pretty much like moving to from side to side. She wasn't as stable as she was supposed to be. The gimbal was acting out and I had problems with it. Now, as soon as 2.6.22 came out, I still had, you know, when, you, when you're already influenced from it, from the prior problems that you had, you, I was cautious about what I was doing, how I was taking off, where I was taking off. And as soon as I did, I felt a difference. There was a difference in this drone and stability wise, there was a difference in this drone wind wise and gimbal strength wise. For some reason, the gimbal does not give me all these error messages anymore when I was going into heavy winds or when I was going up straight and I was trying to look over a landscape. And sometimes I film in areas such as Waikoloa, uh, if you are familiar with it here in Hawaii, Waikoloa is a very, very windy area. Therefore, I have sometimes up to gusts up to 75 miles an hour. Usually this drone, since the last update had issues with it prior to that i had no issues and now since 2.622 i really like the update and she's super solid so hyperlapse mode hyperlapse mode because i'm a big time lapse fan itself hyperlapse is a very very nice intelligent flight mode and now with that cruise and all that stuff there's a lot that you can play around with but there's a big but so when you create a hyperlapse you're gonna get the images that you can choose from either as jpeg as raw um, that it will store inside the folder. When the drone is done taking the hyperlapse, there is a program built in now that they actually utilize to stabilize. So they're gonna crop in a little bit to stabilize the footage a little bit further and to make your time-lapse or hyperlapse look really smooth. It sort of works. Because I'm so spoiled of playing around with my camera having a hyperlapse, which is stationary. I have to keep in mind that this is a drone up in the air. She's fighting wind gusts, she's fighting uh, air pockets, and she's just sitting there or she's hovering around. And while she does, she does have that up and down once in a while that you have that motion in there. Is that totally preventable? No, it's not. That is a total normal thing. But the one thing that I noticed inside these hyperlapses is that there seems to be a tracking focus now. It tracks onto something where you start your hyperlapse. I don't know if it's just me, but in my experience, if you look at my footage over here, it follows the clouds and it just doesn't do it once. It does it multiple times, multiple times that it just follows these clouds. It happened during multiple sunrises that I was doing. It was doing, during, it, was doing it during regular conditions on daytime. It was doing it during regular conditions during sunrise, during sunsets. And 
it's just it, it does that tracking stuff so i'm not quite familiar with it what it could be that it does that and it's also when it is in lower conditions in lower light conditions she does do that that horizon tilt pitch within the hyperlapse which renders some hyperlapses in my eyes useless but that is also because i'm doing a lot of hyperlapses that are prolonged so my hyperlapse clips itself seem to be sometimes too long for the drone because when i was doing hyperlapse clips up to six seconds there was no issues anything beyond seven or eight seconds of video length itself in the hyperlapse seemed to have caused that horizon tilt uh, besides that the intel the, the intelligent flight modes itself i'm pretty excited about it i'm pretty stoked about it 2.6.22 seems to be a very stable version i had no crashes i had no disconnections of my screen i had no disconnections of my rc the only thing that i've noticed is that sometimes attitude initialization in the beginning takes a little bit longer uh, i'm not sure what it is i'm not sure if it's because my gps sometimes or whatever because hawaii we're kind of like behind the moon so we're kind of far off the patch and um so the attitude initialization seems to take a little bit longer but i can live with that you know i can wait 20 seconds and i have no issues with it if you suffered any problems if you have any issues since you updated 2.2 if you update it to the newer version 2.6.22 and you want to share your thoughts inside the comments um just feel free to comment inside there i appreciate all of you guys and don't forget covid19 is still out there to get you wear a mask be a nice human and wash your hands hello everybody did i forget anything did you forget anything did i forget anything did i forget anything i don't know if i forgot anything i don't want to let the guys down you don't forget anything. Wow, wow, oh, ah, ah, wow. <laughs> this first initial sequence is always hard. Ah. I keep getting tongue twisted. Something, right? Oop, I just bumped my drone. Where was I? Totally dig this new shirt from Mikey. Looks like I'm an auto representative. <laughs> but better. I'll tell you, you better start paying me. No. Ah, now you're getting big headed, you idiot. Oh, I cannot turn it off. I need the footage from it. Damn it. Turn it back on. Turn on. On. There you go. Oh, I gotta love great technology. It's so easy. Hi there. How am I gonna get the files off to the computer with this? Connected to the computer. Mwah. Gotta love this drone. It's so pretty. Pretty orange. I'm losing it. What's happening to me? I'm a drone fanatic. I'm a drone addict. <laughs> I'm a drone addict. Is there such thing as a drone addict? Once you get into this hobby, you have so many freaking wires. It's crazy. Plug into the computer. Uh, oh man, I don't want my external hard drive, so I'm gonna store it. One, two, three, four. Batteries. Everything is batteries. Batteries here, batteries there. Pretty soon I'm gonna be just working for the electric bill. And another wire. I really gotta build this freaking plug-in wall. The one that Paul Feinberg had on his channel. I wanna build that. Babe, I wanna build the charger wall. She's gonna kill me. Another project? You didn't even finish your other time. She's gonna kick my butt. Plug you in, plug you in. Plug you in. Igor, flip the switch. Charge the device. Oh, you must be fun on parties. God, I hope nobody hears this. Ever. <laughs> See, you get bright orange next to bright green. I think that looks cool. What is this, like Cheeto drones? Did I forget anything? Did I forget anything? It's so hot. <gasps> oh my God, the camera was on.